The Soviet Union created a whole series of amazing transport vehicles, screen ships, capable of destroying enemy aircraft carriers. Unfortunately, in the 90s almost all the developments were destroyed. Whether these monsters are still able to take to the air, I will tell in this video. What is a screenplane anyway? How can we properly classify this transport? It seems to fly like a plane. But it flies so low, a couple of meters above the water, as you would never think of flying an airplane. It seems to float like a ship, because it starts from the water surface. But once it gains speed, it completely breaks away from the water surface. So what are you, a screenplane? These ship planes were invented at the turn of the 1950s and 1960s in the Soviet Union by the genius designer Rostislav Alexeev, then head of the Central Design Bureau for Hydrofoil Vessels. Screenplanes and screenplanes did not become as well known and widespread as hydrofoils. For various reasons, including economic reasons, the profitability of operation of such vehicles is still a subject of heated debates. But in terms of a number of characteristics, even the old Soviet screen gliders are still completely unique machines. Today I will make a small historical review of some models of screenplanes designed by Alexeev and his pupils. As they say, so that they are remembered. SM-1 The first Alexeev screenplane, which rose into the air independently. The name SM-1 stands for self-propelled model number one. Its parts were built in utmost secrecy in the Gorky Experimental Shop of the Central Design Bureau for the Sprinter aircraft, and the final assembly was conducted at the base of IS-2 near Chkolovsk. The completed machine first flew in screen mode on July 21, 1961. SM-1 had quite compact dimensions, its length did not exceed 20 meters with a wingspan of about 4.8 meters. Takeoff weight was 2,830 kilograms. Power plant for turbo starters TC-12M with thrust of 900 kgf each. Speed at screen mode of flight more than 200 km per hour. In 1962 SM-1 was rebuilt in SM-1 BIS, equipped with single-engine RU-19-300. Trials of the model were interrupted in February 3, 1963 due to a crash. At 220 km per hour, the glider lost control, soared like a candle to a height of 50 meters and crashed from there onto the ice. The entire crew survived with fractures. SM-3 The attempt to create a screenplane with rectangular wings of very low elongation led to the construction in 1963 of a compact model SM-3 with a single RU-19 engine in the nose. Opening nozzles were made in the sides of the machine, with which it maneuvered, by changing the thrust force on one side or the other. The model as a whole was unsuccessful, lacking directional stability. Once it even ended up that in flight the pilot blew away a chicken coop standing on the bank of the Trotsy River. SM-8 the main task of the Central Design Bureau for hydrofoils for the second half of the 1960s was to build a giant screenplane KM weighing 430 tons. In order to work out individual design solutions underlying the giant, there were built at smaller prototypes, scale copies of future giant. The first SM-5 built in late 1963 was destroyed six months later by a pilot error, the crew perished. For this reason, later in 1967, an upgraded model SM-8 was built. The SM-8 proved not just a viable machine. Its amphibious qualities broke all records. It could easily go on unequipped coast, overcome the sand spits, swampy terrain and icy slopes. Cruising speed was about 80 km per hour. The CM-8 had two engines, bow and stern. With a takeoff weight of 8,100 kilograms this machine was able to reach 270 kilometers per hour over water. UT-1 The first model of this trainer was the most compact amongst the ship planes of the 60s. Its appearance became possible due to an accident of the light Czechoslovak airplane Aero 45S, which was on the balance of the flight testing group of the Central Committee on the Sprinter Aircraft. The plane could not be restored, but its two 140-horsepower propeller engines Walter Minor M332 were not damaged at all. One of them was used for the light screen plane. The single-seater UT-1, less than 9 meters long, weighed only 798 kilograms, so it could easily accelerate to 200 kilometers per hour. 
until 1974, it was used as a training bomb on the flight testing group of the Central Design Bureau's test base in Shkolovsk, and in 1974 it was sent to the Chechen island in the Caspian Sea to the place of testing of the giant crash landing aircraft KM. KM. Ship Mach KM, aka Caspian Monster, the most grandiose brainchild of the Central Design Bureau of the SSC. The biggest flying machine in the world was laid in April 1963, and it took three years and two months to build it. The giant was launched into the harbor of Krasnoy Sermovo plant at 4 a.m. on June 23, 1966. In August of the same year, the KM was transferred to the Dagdizel plant in Kaspiysk, which became for a time its main port of call because the size of the Gorky Reservoir was insufficient even for the acceleration of the KM, not to mention the long flight. Together with the layout of the ship to Kaspiysk from Gorky moved more than 200 workers of the Central Design Bureau of the SSC. And for full-scale flight tests later, the KM was transferred to a new secret field test base, arranged on the island of Chechen, far from casual eyes. This is how the KM was hidden from prying eyes in the bay of the Dagdizel plant. The takeoff weight of the KM was fantastic, 430 tons. The size was no less impressive, 100 by 40 meters. It was powered by 10 VD7 KM turbojet engines, 8 bow and 2 stern ones. Each of them had 11,000 kgf of thrust. Later on in the process of modernization, all 10 engines were replaced in the nose section. To ensure the operation of such a junk, the crew had to include at least 7 to 8 people. And in the absence of onboard locating systems, on test flights it was always accompanied by a plane monitoring the environment on the course. Given that the CM quietly developed not a miserable 200 to 250 and all 500 kilometers slash h, it was very relevant. As they say, don't you dare. The flight mechanic manually controlled the operation of 10 engines simultaneously. During one of the takeoffs, the takeoff weight of the KM was increased to 544 tons by loading it with sandbags with a total weight of about 120 tons. At the time, it was an unofficial world record. Unofficial, because the fact of the existence of KM was then strictly classified. US intelligence was able to detect it on images from a spy satellite only May 24, 1970, without, however, understanding the purpose of the monster. On December 15, 1980 the KM left the Dagdizel plant for its last flight. During the tests due to a gross piloting mistake made by the commander during takeoff the screen plane crashed and after some time it sank in the water. No one was killed in the incident, but some crew members were seriously injured. Spring 1981, Caspiysk. The puck of the wing of the sunken KM screen plane is nailed to the shore. In the photo, the grandchildren of Rostislav Alexeev and Vladimir Bulanov, the last chief designer of KM. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.